Hello to all great learners. In the last video, you have learned about how electrons were discovered. And as atoms contain electrons, so to neutralize atoms, there must be equal number of positively charged particles also. Let's learn some terminologies related to coming experiment. Number one, perforated. This means having holes in something. Number two, canal. It means a tube or a passage through which other things can be passed. So let's see when and how positively charged particles were discovered. It was 1886 when Eugene Goldstein, a German physicist, conducted experiments by using discharge tube. He was an early investigator of discharge tube, more before than J.J. Thompson also. This is how discharge tube used by Goldstein looks like. But the difference in discharge tube used by J.J. Thompson and Goldstein is that the cathode was perforated. Goldstein used a cathode which had many holes in it. Let's see the construction. The construction of Goldstein discharge tube is same as J.J. Thompson's. Goldstein used hydrogen gas in the discharge tube and a perforated cathode. When high voltage was supplied across the cathode, as we saw in J.J. Thompson's experiment, Electrons came out of the cathode, but according to Eugene Goldstein, some particles also came out of the anode from the other side and traveled towards cathode. As you can see red beam over here. Now can you guess which charge these particles have which are traveling from anode towards cathode? Yes, they are positively charged opposite to electrons. The reason for perforated cathode is to allow positively charged particles to move through cathode as you can see here. After this observation, Eugene Goldstein named those rays as canal rays, as those rays were passing through canals of cathode. And he concluded that canal rays are positively charged rays. After this, the next groundbreaking experiment in the history of atom was performed by a New Zealand physicist Ernst Rutherford. His famous experiment is gold foil experiment. Let's learn some terminology related to this experiment. Alpha particles. These are positively charged particles coming out of an atom with high speed. Basically, there are three types of particles. Alpha particles, beta particles and gamma particles. Also known as alpha rays, beta rays and gamma rays. Next is radium. It is an element of periodic table. Next is radiate out. It means to move out in all direction like this. The next one is radioactive. When any element radiates out its particles like alpha particles, then that element is known as radioactive element. Next is lead box. It is a box made up of lead metal. Then foil. A foil is a thin sheet of something like we use silver foil paper to wrap our food, right? Now bombarded. Bombarded it means attacking or hitting something. Next is luminescent screen. It is a screen that glows when bombarded with alpha particles. When alpha particles hit the screen, it glows. The next is deflect, it means changing the direction after hitting something, like when you throw a ball at wall, it changes the direction, it is not necessary that ball will come back in that same angle only, right? So deflect. Next is nucleus, nucleus is the central part of an atom. Then repulsion, repulsion means moving away from something, like in magnets you might have seen north and north repel each other or positive charge and positive charge repel each other. This is repulsion. Opposite to repulsion is attraction. Attraction means moving towards something like north south attract each other or positive charge and negative charge attract each other. Now the last one is revolve. Revolve means to move in a circular motion. Like example Planets revolve around the sun. That means they are revolving in a circular motion. They are moving in a circular motion. Understood? Great. 
Now, Rutherford experimentally wanted to check JJ Thompson's plum pudding model as we saw before. He thought alpha particles would bounce back after hitting an atom. But he observed something different. That we'll see later. In his experiment, he used radium, a radioactive metal, a lead box, a gold foil, and a luminescent screen. The gold foil is a thin sheet of gold. Thickness of the gold sheet was about 0.00004 cm. Can you imagine how thin it was? There were only 1000 atoms in the gold sheet used by Rutherford. This is how his experimental setup looks like. This is a lead box with a pinhole in it. Inside this lead box, he placed a radium sample and aligned to this lead box, he placed a gold foil. And back to the gold foil, he placed luminescent screen. When alpha particles get generated inside the lead box, most of the alpha particles get absorbed by the walls of the lead box. But as there's a pinhole, remember, there's a pinhole, so few alpha particles come out of the box and travel in a straight line and bombard it at or hit the gold foil. Now, as I said before, what Rutherford expected and what happened, we'll see now. After alpha particles hit the gold foil, few of the alpha particles get deflected their path, they change their path, few change their angle by 90 degree and few bounce back in the same direction they came. If we look closely by considering an atom, let's see how it looks like. Here is a gold atom and here is the nucleus, which is situated at the center of an atom. When many particles bombarded at an atom, few particles came near to the center of an atom, that is the nucleus, and changed their direction. Now, can you recall what charge alpha particles have? Yes, alpha particles are positively charged, as I said before. Now what happens when two positive charges come closer to each other? Yes, they repel. Same thing happened when alpha particles came near to the nucleus of an atom. Alpha particles also got deflected by some angles. By this, Rutherford concluded that as positive repels positive, alpha particles got repulsion from the nucleus. So he said there are positive particles in the nucleus of an atom, because of which Positive alpha particles got deflected as soon as they came near to the nucleus. Most of the alpha particles travel away from the nucleus, shown no deflection, and passed easily through gold atom. Few alpha particles which travel near to the nucleus, shown maximum deflection, and few alpha particles which travel in the line of the nucleus, they bounced back. By this gold foil experiment, Rutherford concluded that most of the space inside an atom is empty as many alpha particles travel straight through an atom without getting deflected. Few alpha particles shown deflection due to repulsion by nucleus. By this, he concluded that nucleus carries positive charges in it and shortly after World War I, he named those positive particles as protons. He said nucleus is at the center of an atom and electrons revolve around it. Thus. Rutherford's model of an atom looks like our solar system, where nucleus plays the role of the sun and electrons that of revolving planets around the sun. This statement rejected J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model. Lastly, he said electrons and nucleus are held together by electrostatic force. As electrons are negative and nucleus contain protons which are positively charged particles both are attracted towards each other. So according to the force atomic model, this is how diagrammatically an atom looks like, that we can draw on the paper. But in reality, an atom actually looks like this. Don't get muddled. This photo is taken by using a new microscope named Neon Hermes Scanning Transmission Electron Microscope, in short NHSTEM. I hope you have understood how protons were discovered. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section. I'll try to answer soon. Thank you.
Hey guys, I hope you have learned something today. If yes, then click the like button below, comment below, share this video with amazing learners like you, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so whenever I upload any video, you will be notified. Thank you.